If I were to greet you in Uganda, I would say Mbala Muziza. In Thailand, Sawazdi. And another Arabic greeting is Alan Selan. So thank you to the three of you for sending me hellos in your language and that's a request for more of you to do the same. Speaking of Africa, I'm wearing my South African t-shirt in honor of Shalk. Shalk's been commenting a lot lately and watch my videos so greetings my friend uh, on the tip of Africa. I recently had a video assignment in that country last November. Amazingly beautiful place. Here's a quick drone clip. So I have a client that sends me overseas to do videos for them and let's just say I don't argue with that. I'm not doing a lot of traveling right now, of course, with COVID, but we'll be doing that again soon here, hopefully. So today's video, I wanted to address or answer some of the questions um, I've been getting in the comments, as well as show you some of the things that I'm working on and videos are either planned or in progress. So first, I'm going to harvest the worm composter. This thing's been sitting in the garage and the worms have been working all winter long and I'm pretty confident that I've got some castings ready to slice off the bottom. I've got a harvesting bar here on the bottom and as I move this across, it will slice off the bottom two and a half inches or so of castings, hopefully dropping them right into that pan. I had a comment recently that asked for an update and here's the update. First, let me show you inside here. You can see I've got my paper towels in here and some veggie scraps. One thing I look for in my worm composter is castings right along the edge like that. That tells me that the worms are really working hard. Here they are down at that layer. You can see some worms there. There are also a fair amount of mites and earwigs in this composter and that's okay because we're creating an ecosystem here not just worms but all the other critters that go along with that. Alright I'm going to slide this across and hopefully we'll see a nice big hunk of castings slice off like a big piece of chocolate cake. There's still a little bit of the soil in here from when I set this thing up, but there are definitely some castings mixed in with that. Let me lift this whole thing off so you can see the harvesting bar. Gonna take these castings to the garden or maybe start some seeds with them. Nice rich stuff there. Something else I promised a long time ago was the weight of the new perlite and concrete rocket stove. A lot of you wanted to know how much the, the weight difference was. And I actually finally found my hanging scale, which was why I hadn't delivered on that yet. So let's check the weights of the original concrete rocket stove and then the concrete and perlite one to see how much less it weighs. Original concrete. This hanging scale is rated to up to 100 pounds, so I think we're safe. It's like 71 and a half pounds. It's about right considering I used an 80 pound bag of concrete. All right, let's check the perlite and concrete stove. All right, I'm gonna guess 15 pounds lighter. That's a guess. So 52 pounds. 
So 20 pound slider, oh, that's pretty close. So there's your answer. The long awaited answer has probably been about maybe three years since I promised that. It took me that long to find the hanging scale. <laughs> Thanks for being patient. While we're right here, let me tell you about what's happening with the pizza oven. And that is I'm updating the rocket stove on it. Starting to build the base here and I'm actually gonna build a fireplace mortar and lava rock riser to go on top of the fire brick firebox there. So the flue pipe that was in here was just way too long, way too tall to get the fire up into the body of the oven, which I want it kind of rolling across the top to sort of act as a broiler for that pizza. So I had a couple of blocks of concrete and I'm gonna use those to build the space up and then put the rocket stove on top of that and I can get the fire moving across the top of the oven. I'm also gonna use that as a chance to finish out the front too. Put some tile in here on, and kind of tidy that up a little bit. Some of you may have been watching my behind the camera series which I'm posting on Wednesdays about dealing with my hoard. I'm a hoarder or as I like to think of it, a collector, a curator of stuff. And my plan is to actually overcome this mess and turn this into the projects and ideas that I see it as. So the old pile of wood there is actually a tiny house. Let me show you what I'm starting on though. As I work through this challenge for myself, uh, I hope to encourage others to do the same. I am listing the principles that are guiding the process for me as, as I think of them. So the wall of principles has been started. So next Wednesday's video, I'm gonna just do a lot of tidying. So a lot of this little bits and pieces and messy stuff that's all around in here, I'm going to clean that up and put it where it belongs. In fact, it's been hard not to do that right now because <laughs> I, I want to wait and film it. So um, I'm doing an hour a week in this space to take this back and make it a place of peace instead of a place of disarray and disorganization. What's been interesting is as I've started this process, I've done four episodes of that series, I can feel the momentum. I'm starting to move forward. Um, I'm getting things organized that is starting to pour over into other areas of my life, like my really messy closet is now clean. The workshop above the garage, which I'll also show you in that series coming up, um, that's becoming organized as well. So I really hope to be able to overcome what has been an ongoing challenge for me, um, inspire others, inspire some of you to do the same, and I really actually want to then help my mother because she has these same tendencies to save things and that's where I get them. And I really want to help her take back control in that area of her life as well. So stay tuned for that. It's been a lot of fun. One of the projects I finished recently in the Hoarder series is this wall of 2x4s or slats and you can see it took me a while. I've got a darker section and a lighter section up top. That's one year ago. This is in the last couple months and then last week. So this was a great project to finish up. I'm really excited about having it done. You may have seen the keyhole garden video. Here it is. The plantings are growing. I've got squash, tomatoes, parsley, some peppers from seeds are coming up, some basil, some sugar snap peas. So excited to see this coming into its fruition. My greenhouse, however, is in need of some help. In fact, I had a comment recently that's like, what the happened to your greenhouse? And that's about right. Well, for one, I used the wrong kind of plastic for the roof. Well, for one, I overbuilt the thing. I'm going to, in an upcoming video, rehab the greenhouse. So that will include taking this roof structure off, as well as these blocks that covered up the bales of hay that formed the walls. Then I'll be adding some more wood chips to those hoga culture beds in there and cleaning it all out. And it will be a, a more simple hoop house when I get this thing finished again. So, and one of the things I'm gonna add to the front here is a wall made out of adobe bricks. So where you see the wood here now, it's going to be adobe. Let me show you where I got my adobe bricks started. 
Here are some of the bricks that are started. Just a very basic solar kiln. I do plan to make a proper solar kiln here coming up soon. Not just to dry blocks, but to also dry some hardwood. So these bricks, to fire them, I'm going to make a massive rocket stove. So out of the bricks, but then the goal will be just to fire them to get one edge, um, the outer edge of this, a little more solid. So they'll hold up to the weather and um, as they form that thermal wall for the greenhouse. So I'm really excited about that. Gonna do a video here soon on how I'm gonna make the bricks and that will follow that up with uh, the rocket stove, which I'm planning to make about eight feet tall. I'm gonna go as big as I can safely and um, so that's gonna be epic. I just had a commenter say she was building some Hugo culture beds. So I thought I'd show you how this one's doing. Marsha, I hope your Hugo culture beds go well. Got some tomatoes that are almost ready. I'm excited about my garden, but I'm still not calling myself a gardener. <laughs> not quite there yet. Although as soon as I eat some green beans out of this one, maybe that would qualify. So I know a lot of you are coming to this channel for rocket stove videos and I'm going to continue to make rocket stoves. But my larger goal here in the backyard is a system. So, and a rocket stove is a big part of that. But I use the rocket stove to make biochar, I use it to make wood ash, I use it to make heat, to boil water, to cook. But then a lot of those components are then going into other areas. So the wood ash, the biochar goes into the garden beds, the hugelkultur beds, the composting systems. So it's all connected and I do feel like yes, a rocket stove is probably the most exciting thing that I'm making here on this channel, but it is just part of that system. So let me encourage you to stick around for more than just the rocket stove videos. I hope you find that interesting as well. Let me also say that I'm really thankful for those of you who support me on Patreon. It's not a requirement of watching these videos. They're always going to be free here on YouTube. But if you want to take a step further and help me produce this content so I can do more, you can support me over on Patreon. One of the additional benefits that I offer over there is short videos about how I see different elements of my backyard system working together. So. Um, Here's a quick sample of what one of those videos looks like. Hello patrons, thanks for your support. I want to tell you a little bit about what's happening here behind me. This is a hugel culture bed that I made probably two years ago. And one of the things that I do to overwinter it is plant a cover crop, which you can see here, the winter rye. Got a lot of green above ground. So what I'm gonna to do today, you can see I've done to this half already which is I'm knocking that grass down with about six inches of wood chips. Whew, that's a workout. Now into this row of soil, I'm gonna plant my seeds. Beans are a great staple crop to have, certainly in times like these. And beans are actually one of those things that you can harvest the earliest. So obviously that's a lot more off the cuff a little more day to day, but if you're looking for that type of content, that's available there for as little as a dollar a month. What I primarily use my Patreon support for is hiring Jordan, who is a cameraman and editor. Jordan helps film and edit these videos so that I can produce more of them. Because I am producing a Wednesday series, I'm gonna move my traditionally Friday post to Saturday. It's probably been posted more on Saturdays recently anyway, but I feel like a Wednesday and a Saturday schedule is gonna make more sense uh, for those of you who are watching my videos. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to deliver excellent content to you that helps you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching, for liking, for sharing. Keep all those amazing comments and suggestions and ideas coming. I really do value those and as you can see, they sometimes show up in videos. So. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next Saturday. Or Wednesday. There's a video on Wednesday, too. Thanks for watching.